Is it me, or do you also think by developing very intelligent robots, we risk falling into their trap? I'll tell you the story of how a female AI seduces a genius programmer in order to achieve her goal. Hey guys, this is Afraid, and you are watching Ex Machina. Let's get into it. We're in an open plan, ultra designed office. The guy writing the lines of code is Caleb. He's a young programmer who gets the chance to spend a week in the mountain house of Nathan Bateman the CEO of the company he works for, Blue Book. He basically won the lottery, because even the president couldn't contact Nathan. But Caleb will spend seven days with him. Heading to Nathan's house by helicopter, we see a spectacular mountain landscape. Waterfalls cascading downhill, massive rock walls of stunning beauty, rivers, the forest, it was all Nathan's property. Suddenly the pilot stops and lands in the middle of a flatland, saying he wasn't allowed to get any closer. Moments later, in a roar of wind and noise, the helicopter is lifting. Caleb suddenly seems very isolated. Caleb follows the pilot's instructions and sees Nathan's house. He walks towards the house with the trees and finally reaches the front door. At the door, an automated voice calls Caleb and takes a picture of him. Immediately after, comes out a key card with an embedded chip and Caleb's face on it. He looks comically surprised. Caleb entered a very modern and spacious house. He found no one inside. Then he heard a sudden thumping sound. Caleb enters the dining room, which now reveals a huge glass door. It presents a captivating view of a garden, river, and the mountains behind. Just outside, in the sunshine, a man is working a punching bag. This is Nathan Bateman, the CEO of Blue Book. Do you know Mozart, the little boy who learned notes before letters? Here's Nathan. He's considered Mozart in the programming world, a true genius. Nathan understands Caleb's excitement to now be with him in this house, but he quickly told him to switch from the employer-employee thing to simply two friends, Nathan and Caleb. Nathan shows Caleb's room to him, and Caleb notices that there are no windows like in a normal room. Nathan quickly reveals to him that his house is nothing more than a large research laboratory, where he has single-handedly designed and built a humanoid machine with artificial intelligence named Ava. Before I go any further, I need to explain what the Turing test is. It's where a human interacts with a computer. And if the human can't tell they're interacting with a computer, the test is passed. And what does a pass tell us? It tells that the computer has artificial intelligence. So, Caleb will be the human component in this test. He will have to test the AI called Ava, built by Nathan. And here we are at the first session with Ava. Ava is described as a slender woman in her early 20s. Her limbs and torso are a mixture of metal, plastic, and carbon fiber. Her body structure is covered in delicate skin. The skin is a web, shaped like a honeycomb. Like a spider's web, it's almost invisible, unless illuminated from the side. The only part of her that's not obviously an inorganic construct is her face, which is that of an extraordinarily beautiful girl. The room in which Ava lives consists of two primary areas. The main area is the observation room. A large area, arranged around a glass box from which she can be visited. At the end of the observation room, behind a semi-opaque glass pane, is the private area. This contains a bed-like structure, a desk, a closet, and a mirror. And there is a chair, opposite the glass observation box. Caleb meets Ava, and proposes to break the ice. To Caleb's surprise, Ava understands what this matter of speaking means. That is, get over the initial social awkwardness. So, they start talking about simple things, and Caleb is immediately fascinated by Ava's communication skills and intelligence. Caleb was very excited, and wanted to understand how Ava worked. But Nathan didn't want to reveal that. He just wanted to have a simple conversation, not a seminar. After that, Nathan asked him what he thought about Ava, not analytically. To which Caleb replied that Ava was just freaking amazing. At night, Caleb, unable to sleep, turns on the TV but instead of television programs, he sees a live feed from a CCTV camera. It shows the observation room. Then suddenly, the TV goes off, and the windowless room is plunged into total darkness and silence. The automated voice announces a power outage. After that, the soft emergency light comes on. Caleb tried to use the card to get out of the room, but to no avail. After the power was back on, Caleb walked out of the room and entered another one. It appears to be empty, still and silent. Only one area is properly lit, a wall on which hangs a large painting by Jackson Pollock. There is a telephone on a low table. Caleb approaches with a half-hearted glance over his shoulder. 
as if he feels he's doing something that he shouldn't. He took the phone in his hand, and behind him was Nathan, who was half drunk. He told him he couldn't use the phone. After a short conversation, Nathan told him not to worry about power cuts and wished him sweet dreams. In the morning, Caleb is awakened by the light flooding his face. The door opens, and a girl who looks Japanese enters. She is extraordinarily pretty, and she doesn't say anything. She simply enters, carrying a tray with coffee for Caleb. New day, new session. Caleb made it to a second session with Ava. Ava holds a piece of paper on the glass. The marks on it are totally abstract, a network of tiny black marks swirling around the page. Caleb doesn't understand what Ava wanted to draw, and suggests that she draw someone, or something specific. When Ava asked him what she should draw, Caleb told her that she could choose freely. After that, Ava stood up and asked Caleb if he wanted to be her friend. Caleb confirmed, but at this point, Ava told him that he should talk about himself, as she had done. Also, Ava told him that he could freely choose what to talk about, and now Caleb is aware that Ava has just politely used sarcasm. After that, Caleb began to tell Ava about his background. He told her that he has no brothers or sisters. He lives alone in a small apartment. Unfortunately, his parents died in a car accident. Watch closely as Ava changes her facial expression when she hears the sad incident of Caleb's parents. Spectacular. While talking about coding, suddenly, Ava asked Caleb if Nathan is his good friend. Caleb, of course, replied that no, as they have only just met. After that, instantly, the electricity goes out. Then the soft emergency lighting lifts up and throws the observation room into a completely different light. Ava looks at Caleb with a strange intensity. She told him not to trust Nathan not to believe anything he tells him. After that, the electricity activated again. When Caleb looks back at Ava, she has returned to her previous posture, facial expression, and manner. She looks directly at Caleb and talks as if continuing a conversation they have been having. After the session, Caleb and Nathan sit down at the dining table. Kyoko arranges different types of salad among them. As she does so, she drops a bottle of wine on the table. During dinner, Nathan asked him what happened when the electricity went out. After a short pause, Caleb looked into Nathan's eyes and said that nothing unusual had happened. Nathan is not stupid, and pretended to believe Caleb's words. After that, Nathan gave Caleb a tour of the lab where Ava was created. Ava's brain contained a structured gel that was much more advanced than circuitry. The brain would arrange and rearrange on a molecular level as needed, whether it be to recall a memory, talk, move. Session 3 Ava had drawn something specific as Caleb proposed. Ava had drawn the garden she had inside her large room. At that point, Caleb realizes that Ava had never left this room. So, he asked her where she would go if she could get out of here, to which Ava replied that she would go to a busy pedestrian intersection in a city. Caleb didn't expect this answer, but Ava justified it by saying that this way, she will be able to admire humans and analyze them. Suddenly, Ava told Caleb that she wanted to show him something else, but he had to close his eyes. Ava stands and walks to the private area at the back of the observation room. As she walks, Caleb reopens his eyes. In the private area, Ava opens a wardrobe space, which reveals clothes and a hairpiece. She then begins dressing, first a summer dress, then socks, then a long-sleeved cardigan. She checks her reflection in the mirror and lightly adjusts her clothes, making sure as much of her robotic form is covered as possible. Then she puts on her wig, short brown hair. Caleb's eyes open again, and he suddenly looks nervous, not expecting this. Ava told him this is how she would dress on their date. Yes, you got that right, the date with Caleb. Caleb begins to shake slightly, and as a result, his voice changes as well. Ava asks him if he likes her. She noticed Caleb's body language showing signs of liking her. After the session, Caleb asked Nathan why he had Ava had a sexual gender. Caleb suspected that Nathan had programmed Ava for the purpose of flirting with him. Talking about the sexual gender, Nathan revealed that Ava could have sex. She has a cavity between her legs, with a concentration of sensors. If you interact with them in the right way, she will get a pleasant response. Nathan still did not answer Caleb's question. The real question was whether Nathan gave her sexuality as a diversionary tactic, so as to cloud artificial intelligence's ability to judge. Finally. Nathan said he programmed Ava to simply be heterosexual, so she has the freedom to choose who to like and who not to like. Session 4 Caleb reveals to her that all this time he was testing her. After that, Ava said she felt sad 
and suddenly the electricity went off again. Ava replied that all this time, it was her turning off the electricity, finding a bug in the system. Do you see how brilliant that is? After the session, Nathan and Caleb climb up the side of the waterfall at the head of the forested valley. After that, they sit near the base of a spectacular glacier. By now, Caleb realizes he hasn't won anything, but he has been specially chosen by Nathan for this project. At this point, Nathan reveals to him that he chose him because he was the best programmer in the company. Time passed, and Caleb thought about Ava more and more often. Caleb enters his bedroom wearing boxers. The TV plays the live stream from the observation room. A moment later, Nathan enters the frame. There is no volume on the TV, so Caleb can't hear anything, only see. Nathan picks up the drawing Ava was working on and looks at it for a moment. They exchange a few words. Then, suddenly, Nathan rips the drawing in half and drops it on the floor. Session 5 In this session, Ava decides to test Caleb by asking him questions. She can easily tell if Caleb is lying or not, so he has no way out. After a couple of simple questions, Ava asked if Caleb was a good guy. Caleb obviously states yes, and Ava recognizes this as truth. Now comes the hard questions. Ava keeps asking what will happen to her if she fails the test. After that, she shows Caleb the portrait she had drawn, and in the process, turns off the electricity. During the blackout, Ava told him she would like to be with him, and asked if he felt the same way about her. Guess what Caleb's answer was. As time passes, Caleb begins to grow increasingly impatient with Nathan, who comes across to him as a narcissistic blowhard who treats both Ava and Kyoko very poorly. When the inventor reveals that he intends to erase all of Ava's memories in order to take her to the next level of experimentation, Caleb is reluctant and takes advantage of a moment of Nathan's drunkenness to enter his studio and observe his experiments. In doing so, Caleb discovers that Nathan has worked with dozens of other robots in the past and that Kyoko herself is one of them. Terrified by the idea that he might be an automation himself, Caleb injures himself to ascertain his humanity. The sight of his blood refreshes him. Session 6 Ava appears very sad and disappointed. She realizes that Caleb had something to say and turns off the electricity. Caleb's plan was to get Nathan drunk again so he could run away from the house with Ava. But they did not know that all this time, Nathan had recently installed a new camera. Rightly so, since the power cuts were happening more and more often, he was beginning to suspect something. Nathan actually overheard the conversations that the two believed to be secret and saw the scene where Caleb was getting hurt, so he refuses to drink. Nathan reveals to Caleb that, in his opinion, Ava was only pretending to be interested in him so that he could help her escape. This would therefore demonstrate Ava's real human intelligence. Nathan shows Caleb the recordings, thinking he has everything under control. He revealed to him that all this time, Caleb was merely a means for Ava to escape. While Ava turns off the electricity, as she had promised Caleb, Caleb reveals how things really went down, suspecting that Nathan was listening in on their conversations the day before, while Nathan was unconscious from alcohol. He had already disabled the security systems in case of a blackout. Then the power comes back on. Computer monitors are back to life, revealing something. On the CCTV feed of Ava's room, the door is open. Nathan freezes when he sees it. Almost as an afterthought, Nathan lands a quick punch to Caleb. After that, Nathan picks up the dumbbell from the floor. He spins the weights around, taking only the thick metal bar. Nathan enters the hallway. He sees, right in front of him, down the hall, Ava and Kyoko. Ava's mouth is near Kyoko's ear, as if telling her a secret. Then, Ava starts running towards Nathan. She jumps on him, and they fly backward. Nathan manages to get up first and swings the metal bar. Ava raises her left arm defensively, and surprisingly, Nathan hits her, shattering the carbon fiber bone structure. Then Nathan prepares to deliver a lethal blow, but behind him, Kyoko thrusts a razor-sharp knife into his back. Nathan turns around and hits Kyoko's jaw, smashing it. Ava manages to get up and grabs the knife from Nathan's back, plunging it into his stomach. Session 7 After killing Nathan, Ava enters his study to ask Caleb if he will stay here. Caleb does not understand the meaning of the question and does not give a concrete answer, after which Ava left the room. Afterward, Ava went to Nathan's dormitory where she found the other robots, who, however, had the skin on them, clothes, and more. Ava got ready and looked like a real human being. Afterward, she left Caleb behind. Once outside, Ava absorbed the sunrise, the view of the sky, and the mountains. 
Caleb then realizes that Nathan was right and that he is now destined to die of hardship. In the hours that follow, Ava is finally free to live a normal life among people, the city, and nature. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then find out how an old witch sacrifices her family to reincarnate a demon.